Good evening. This is The Writer's Eye, and I'm your host, Charles Russell. Tonight, our guest is uh, Stephen Shaw. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, we explore the uh, creative process uh, in this show, and uh, Steve is uh, um, a triple threat, I guess we could say. <laughs> he's, a, uh, he's a writer, he's an artist, and uh, he's also a uh, mu musician. Uh, which came first, Steve, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> well, you gave me three things there. Well, well, I would say writing probably came first, and, but there is the exploring the connection between all those is largely what we're talking about here. Um, Painting is very rhythmic in the same sense that music is, and writing is very visual. So what I'm trying to do is kind of combine all those things into one type of art. Um, one of the reasons that we have a couple of paintings here tonight is that uh, when you're doing a creative process, often what you're trying to do is to take juxtapositions and to try to see the relationship between them. And we have an example of that here in the two paintings that I brought along. This really is, of course, this is Van Gogh, and that's Gauguin. And what I tried to do there was to represent, find a visual representation for innocence, which is what Van Gogh represents, and experience, which is what Gauguin represents. And it's really how innocence and experience play off one another that you're constantly doing when you're in the writing process, and also the painting process. Um, one of the things that, one of the great things about the original, this is a copy of a self-portrait of Van Gogh. One of the great things that he did was to realize that there's a line that goes through the eyes here. And he, juxt he juxtaposed color in the background of this painting. And that was a tremendous thing for me to learn from studying Van Gogh. Uh, because not only are you trying to create a character through the visualization in a portrait, but you're also supposed to be reconciling color relationships. And um, there's a great story about this painting in the original. Of course, there's a bandage there, and one of the most best things that's known about Van Gogh is that he cut off his ear. Gave it to his lover, didn't he? Right. But this is after that happened, and he, ha he always had trouble, or one of his artistic problems was to get the Line, the relationship of the horizontal and the vertical. When he painted this one, he looked at the bandage of his ear and he realized that that unified both the green of the coat, the blue of the cap, and the corresponding things that are going in the background. In other words, something that was a totally negative act, once he looked in the mirror and tried to put it together, he used his painterly skill mm -hmm. to almost heal himself when he was doing this portrait. And again, I think that there is a great relationship between writing and healing. And what you're trying to do when you write, when you paint, even when you're doing music, is to try to identify parts of yourself that are not together and find some kind of way of pulling them together. It's almost the definition of the creative process. And with Gauguin, uh, the experience uh, uh, angle? Yeah. <clears throat> when the more you write, the more experience you get. And actually, you can get very cynical when you write. Uh, trying to find a balance between these two. Uh, much writing, of course, is an attempt to recapture your childhood. But there's also, when you're going through the process, you realize that experience is such that it overlays something. Yeah. And uh, the two sides of the uh, personalities that are represented here are the one who constantly sees how society distorts innocence Whereas someone, which is more the Gauguin personality, and that's why the snake is there. And as a matter of fact, this is a symbol of the futility of words. By the way, I should mention that they were both writers, too. They were. I that's didn't, I didn't know that. Well, now, what here, in your own personal writings, what would you relate to uh, the innocence of uh, Van Gogh? I mean, uh, a story about your youth or growing up or... Uh, well, I think it's more like uh, seeing the freshness of different objects in the world, which is another, another key item in writing and painting. Uh, Van Gogh was able to see everything with new eyes, and that's what I really represent by innocence. Whereas Gauguin was able to see that there might be a bait and switch quality to objects, so he's and a, that he's, he's, he's more of the cynical yes. side of it. The two of them were great artists, but they could not live together. And so that they also represent the two sides of the artist, the one who sees things afresh, 
the one who is aware of judgment and criticism and has to develop a defense mechanism against that. This is the two sides of my personality, if you want to actually get down to why they're painted and why they're juxtaposed. Okay, and these, I, I, my, my, my art history doesn't come back quite quickly. These were contemporaries, what, in the 18, 1880s, 1890s? They, they, they shared a house together in Arles, France mm -hmm. in 1888. Well, speaking more on the uh, the writing process, I mean, yeah. what, uh, how do you, uh, the methodology, I mean, do you sit down at a certain time of day and write? Do you, how do you get your ideas? Uh, well, a lot of, um, another big influence on my writing was Joyce, and Joyce has something called epiphany, which is sort of this time when things all come together, where you see similarities. Um, for example, the ideas of these two paintings, I can do the eyes differently from innocence, and I can do the eyes differently when I'm trying to express experience. The whole concept of the eyes representing different sides of a personality is something, oh, that's a great idea. When I approach the painting, mm -hmm. I'll look at the eyes as a way of getting across the idea. Mm -hmm. Now, something like that happens in the writing process. You see a similarity between two things that were disparate. They were apart before. You didn't see how they were connected. And the writing, sometimes it's the actual process of writing that allows you to do that. Sometimes you see things that were not mm -hmm. apparently connected, and you see the connection underneath. It's somewhat similar to having fragments and being able to put them together into the pot mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever archaeological metaphor you want to use. Yeah. You've brought some other uh, paintings. Uh, yeah. I didn't know if uh, you wanted to well, add a couple more or a single you wanted to push up. Or? I think if we've established, thank you, Charlie, if that we've, you can start doing this with personalities. The next thing is to start doing it with objects, more abstract. By the way, both Van Gogh and Gauguin did that too. This, in this painting, we have a cracked pot and a liberty bell. And the motto of this painting is that uh, there is no freedom which is not in some way cracked. And the idea there is the flaw in the Liberty Bell is actually as important as the liberty part of the Liberty Bell. In other words, um, the American Revolution was really fought from a side. It was really won. Let's go back a little bit. At, at Yorktown, the British band played, the world turned upside down. And what they were saying in that comment was that it sh this should not be right that a lower colony has somehow emerged and become a world power. The whole idea of the crackedness is right embedded in the American Revolution. And what I tried to do is say, often an artist is called a crackpot because they're, <laughs> they're often expressing ideas that seem to be over the head of current society. And it's that very crackedness, identifying it, making it part of your art, that is an essential Mm -hmm. element, I think, in, in the creative process. By the way, I mentioned the, the background running through here, and, and blue and yellow are complementary colors. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do is reconcile opposites vertically at the same time as I'm trying to reconcile opposites in containers horizontally. Mm -hmm. And you also get, this is a very simple painting in many ways, but the ideas behind it have a tendency to be much more complex than just the visual imagery. Mm -hmm. This container is right side up, this one is upside down. Mm -hmm. So it's a play on things that are the same, but they're different when they're the same, when they're different. That's what this painting is about, and that's what writing is about, really. And so you, you would use this same type of uh, philosophy, uh, juxtapositions and uh, com comparative and uh, differences uh, in your writing as well? Yes. These okay. are visual representations of, okay. of how I write. What, what's your preferred uh, uh, form of writing? I mean, is it poetry? Is it short stories? Or uh... <clears throat> Well, there, there's a lot of variety in, in what I write, and I try to do that on purpose. Um, the smallest versions, the most compact, are songs. You mentioned that I also play guitar. And uh, in a, a song, the shortest song may be three verses long. And what I try to do is juxt juxtapose items, reconcile opposites in that short amount. But once you learn how to do it in the shorter version, you can expand up upon that. Mm -hmm. And the largest project I'm working on is five series of novels. They're five separate novels, but they go across. Uh, I brought a, this one along, too, because I think it connects with something that we were talking about. One of the things that you have to do when you write, or what I have to do when I write, is to do a lot of research. And Life magazine has turned out to be one of the great sources. For example, when I'm writing about my mother and father, 
all I have is my own memories to go on. But if I go back and look at the Life magazines and the, pic the actual the pictorial Life is the photographer's magazine, really, I get a sense of what it was like to be alive in 1930 when I was not alive. Mm -hmm. This visualization allows me to see, by studying photographs in Life magazine, how people viewed things back then, which gives me a greater insight on my mother and father. It allows me to create their character much better. And you have, a, a, what is that, an egg in the lower corner there? Could be an egg. It's actually intended to be an amoeba. Mm -hmm. And the, this, is, this painting is a really a visual pun. Mm -hmm. A lot of puns in my writing, obviously. Mm -hmm. But not flat puns. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be multi multiplicitous puns. This, essentially, this painting is a pun on still life. And really, no life is still. And that's what the amoeba is supposed to represent. Oh. Also, an amoeba doesn't die as binary fission. Therefore, that's, this is eternal life, in a sense, down here. We might have time for one more. I don't okay. want to rush you along, but... Uh... Well, this probably is a good concluding one. Um, I think that another juxtaposition that happens when you write or paint is that you get a new awareness of time. And that's what this painting is supposed to represent. There is the kind of time that is trapped in the top part of the hourglass, which is contained time. And, and there is the kind of time that, in effect, breaks the hourglass. And when you paint and write and do music, you get into a rhythm that is more related to psychological time and less related to clock time. And this painting is a juxtaposition of the two types of time. Mm -hmm. The type of time that I associate with my working life is more the top part of the hourglass. The time that I associate with the art is down here in the broken part. The point, of course, is that this time is not as contained as that time. And that's the juxtaposition that's in this painting. Okay. One of the great things about writing is to get to a, a, almost a timeless state where uh, the normal, and let's use time here as a metaphor for judgment, the normal things that keep you, keep things in boxes and keep you thinking almost logically gets broken up mm -hmm. when you're in an artistic process and you forget about the clock. And I think that's a metaphor for forgetting about judgment, forgetting about a number of things that cause writers or painters block. By the way, and I, we're probably getting near the end here, I don't know. We're getting close, but, but uh, a couple uh, minutes. <clears throat> I, I, I just want to uh, indicate that one of the great things about writing and painting is that it, it allows you to get into an area that you don't normally, in your normal working life, get to. Mm -hmm. It's an accessing type thing. And you don't really need talent to do it. Um, a lot of people do not paint because they feel that is a special gift that only certain people have been given. But actually the gift is one of being able to see juxtapositions or being able to see something and then merely figuring out how to get the visual and color shapes to express that. In other words, talent is the wrong way of thinking about painting. Well, you can create your own reality outside of your life or your own unreality, I take it. And, and to me, it's, to me it's, a, it's a more intense reality, a, mm -hmm. a reality that has more meaning. So how much time do you spend writing versus uh, painting? It's about equal now. Okay. Uh, most, of these, most of these paintings actually have writing that go with them. And, okay. okay, so there's a poem on the back of this that oh. this painting inspired. And you had this, actually, didn't some of these show down at the Concord Library yes, a few they were on, in the they past were on, year? Yes, that's right. It was, yeah. um, well, it was a monthly show. We'll, uh, we'll have to leave this for a, a little more uh, longer show at a later time, but it's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, Thank you. With the writer's eye and uh, seeing uh, how the uh, interaction and juxtaposition, as you use the word, yep. uh, of uh, art, uh, music, and... Uh, uh, painting comes together. I, I hope we've explained the show's title. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we, uh, we thank you, uh, Steve Shaw, for being with us. Thank and, you, Charlie. Uh, this is uh, Charlie Russell uh, saying good evening for the writer's eye. Thank you very much. <laughs>